Hi all, I have an absolutely amazing game to show you today. Stockfish playing white against Leela. This is the peak of Leela's Test 30 network. So in this round, round 145, it's 200 games I believe, of the Winter Classic final, it's a 10 minute uh, time control with a 10 second increment. We had in the opening E4, Knight to F6, the Alekine's uh, defense, named after Alexander Alekine. A great world chess champion now here is the end of the book given to both knight f3 d takes knight takes e5 and here leela by choosing chooses to play in a rather provocative way here the knight is clearly hitting the soft spot f7 and leader's choice is knight d7 which looks a little bit risky if this is a dangerous peace sacrifice. In fact, uh, this is quite a, a cultural uh, landmark, this particular position. It occurred in the game Mikhail Tal, one of the most brilliant world champions ever, against the great Dane Bent Larsen in the Bled Tournament of 1965. And they called that game Tal Blinkered because he didn't actually go for knight takes f7 he really couldn't calculate the complications and went instead for bishop c4 and the game ended the draw in a draw in about 77 moves uh you can see in the uh, annotated game comments if you check out the annotated game link uh the pin comment in in the uh, comments section for that game it carried on so move 77 like here was a draw so that was uh Tal playing bishop c4 not playing knight takes f7 a year later fisher though in a five minute game <laughs> seemed to have researched uh, the, uh, the position and actually did play knight takes f7 in the fisher game uh yeah this proved very very dangerous what happened there was king takes check and fisher played a kind of testing move uh not c4 like this game but queen g4 check and it would have been interesting perhaps to see king f7 rather than uh, the king going to d6 uh, to really test fisher's preparation after king d6 fisher smashed uh, to smithereens bent larsen but it was a blitz game let's have a quick look so white gets the piece back and now knight c3 offering d4 and it's encouraging white's development losing d4 with the king in the center another piece developed with tempo and here another pawn sack for another piece to be developed with tempo against the king and the rook coming to the center it's a dream opening for white absolutely crushing knight b5 perhaps this is one of bent larsen's most crushing blitz defeats to fisher ever so black had to resign here basically as an example, e5, knight takes c7, bishop c5 is checkmate. Yes, it's absolutely a hopeless position. So Fisher took up the gauntlet, basically. And by the way, a shout out to this major <laughs> Stockfish fan who, who who sort of says GM Fisher, as, as though Stockfish is, is the, <laughs> the computer equivalent of Fisher. Okay, so um, playing on the Fisher name fish stockfish i guess so anyway uh here so knight d7 was played now leader could have played in in the chess base live book c6 seems to be a solid option at the moment the queen has got scope and quite often players uh prevent that scope with bishop e2 so that's a, that's in a way a safe waiting move to ask for bishop e2 which makes the whole knight sack concept uh less relevant and also of course c6 is supporting the knight so this is like a safety move uh c6 where the bishop can actually develop outside of the pawn chain potentially as well and this kind of thing doesn't really it gives white a small edge but it's not absolutely winning or anything it's a, a reasonably solid way for black to play and usually players don't 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 test with g4 here they actually sometimes retreat the knights white's content with a small edge usually so that's a really safe way of playing it so leader in this game yeah takes a kind of risk which maybe does she underestimate the risk 
of the soft spot exposure. So Stockfish, like Fisher, <laughs> played knight takes f7, where Tau blinkered with uh, wimping out with bishop c4 here, which is unlike Tau, actually, of course. So knight takes f7, king takes f7. Uh, we have now queen h5 check. So double attacking the king, of course, and the knight. A disaster for black is king g8, just losing immediately to queen takes d5, queen takes e6 is checkmate. Uh, not great at all for black is g6, giving the piece back. Uh, this is just absolutely wonderful for white. This kind of scenario is wonderful. White could even go in for an h4 attack with a big advantage. So king f6, just letting the knight, just giving back the piece is no good. This is really... Uh, fantastic for white as well so the really the only move for black is to step the king in the center to protect d5 okay so critical position and c4 was played so in the fisher game we saw the testing move queen g4 not c4 and it would have been interesting if king f7 uh queen h5 just just to see uh if fisher would have played c4 in that particular position so anyway here we have c4 uh, so the knight actually goes back to f6 yeah black doesn't really want to give a piece back here that would be overly generous for example this position with queen h4 yeah white's doing fantastically well big advantage so trying to cling on to the extra piece the knight going back but the price is the king is stepping to a central square which is relatively unheard of for an opening and then we have queen f7 which looks at going into e6 now that's defended with knight e5 hitting the queen and opening up the bishop seems an entirely logical move uh alternatives don't bear thinking about say queen e8 uh check the king gets chased a3 is now facilitating b4 and bishop b2 sometimes for example like this would be a neat checkmate knight c5 doesn't also help too much because it can be kicked and if here then we just take the knight and it's nasty for black um yeah it's it's all pretty pretty nasty if the knight goes to e4 then f3 the knights have run out of squares here why it's getting a big advantage so this really does seem like uh, one of the best moves in the position knight e5 uh to cover that e6 square with tempo hitting the queen asking the queen to do something or something to do with knight pinning the knight to stop knight takes queen pinning the knight we have now c5 you might think what about trying to chase the pinner away so we can play knight takes queen well g5 there's actually c5 check and this position white taking on e5 losing d5 is no big deal check and it's it gets nasty because of this pin and after bishop takes c7, white is much better here. White's in great shape here with a big advantage. Uh, in this line, by the way, uh, here, uh, if king b6, then queen takes d5 and that very nasty pin against the rook. White's well, massive advantage there, of course. So uh, c5, very logical move. Knight c3. Uh, if d takes c6 black's pieces spring into life with a vengeance uh, because of check which actually protects the knight now that pawn's not shielding that rank and this means actually that here after king takes c6 uh the, the knight hitting the queen is pretty nasty the queen's kind of trapped on f7 and if white's forced to play a desperate looking move like that then we just take the queen off and black's got a big advantage here if bishop takes then it's check and then bishop e6 again checkmates in a way the queen and this doesn't really help white black can sack the queen there and take that big advantage so white has to be very careful so knight c3 not taking en passant uh, we have a6 because there's a big threat of knight b5 check here uh, if bishop d7 there's an intrigue with actually the point here knight b5 to deflect the bishop away from e6 is important 
so we take this opportunity instead here with a big advantage pinning the Queen and uh, yeah and sorting out the business with any counter pin before taking the Queen lovely lovely so a6 so b4 very violent move from Stockfish this is really Stockfish's cup of tea this position uh, to really kind of solve it like a, an elaborate chess puzzle uh, with a kind of brute style s s approach brute force style approach not absolute brute force because chess isn't the solve game when I say that I mean putting a lot of computational effort into it so a6 we have um, sorry b6 if Queen c7 then Knight a4 here is inflicting the damage so for example b6 white castles and this scenario as you might think is pretty precarious for the black king uh, for or losing the queen there in that variation and if here if queen d7 knight takes b6 yeah with the black king in the center all sorts of nasties will happen to it generally especially when playing stockfish the greatest tactical engine in the world okay so uh so not queen c7 it just doesn't seem to uh not queen c7 either let's have a look uh so knight as we saw knight a4 there uh and c takes b4 c5 check and then knight a4 this threatens now knight c4 check uh, so that puts pressure on the pin and this is just devastation as well this this kind of scenario is absolutely devastating uh, okay so not too many choices really uh, really for black hair so b6 was tried bishop d3 we have g6 which makes way for the possibility of trying to deflect away the pinner so knight takes f7 happens so bishop h6 you can imagine takes and knight takes f7 that's kind of one of the resources revealed by g6 as well as developing the bishop uh, here uh, on c takes knight e4 check bishop takes this is nasty for black bishop f5 and uh, it's crumbling there uh, this is great news for white so uh, g6 b takes c5 b takes c5 the king doesn't really want to come out to play under any circumstance this is just a nightmare doesn't bear thinking about just chat end up winning lots of material so yeah the king has to stay put there and hold on to that knight for dear life so rook b1 this is the intriguing thing rook b1 tactically from a tactical philosophy perspective and that's something um i've got a few people who, who kind of underestimate tactics as if it's uh, a mechanical process it's not because we can't really calculate that well so i believe there's a big role of tactical philosophy as I, as I call it and here I think one of the philosophies we can sort of deduce from stockfish is that it's trying to cover the king escape squares in this position and if it actually entrenches a rook here it, by covering escape squares you're, you're halfway or more than halfway sometimes towards constructing mating possibilities so this is a really dangerous idea because the bishop's kind of an overworked piece anyway trying to cover e6 in this position as well so this is a really interesting rook g8 was played this is a really fascinating position if queen a5 then bishop takes and king d2 protects the knight the really elegant move and makes way for the king to be in real trouble this really crashes through for white winning material uh, if rook a7 this is another example and white castles bishop h6 white can just take on e5 check and this position is crushing uh, whatever black does for example here uh, this is the way to go it's absolutely uh, crushing scenarios where the king gets hunted down uh, if we look at this again this is a fascinating line I thought to stop rook b7 from white uh, here if King takes d3, then knight e4 check, d6, taking here, and this is massacre time as well. Uh, okay, yeah, so there's a wolf of variations here 
to do with uh, Queen A5. Very interesting to check out. Uh, so Rook A7 is another alternative. Uh, there's a line with Rook C7. Oh, that was in the deep line. Forget that. Okay, so you get the gist. Uh, so Rook B1, Rook G8. Oh, there's one other point. Let's let's try the deflection with Bishop H6. Here, uh, there's actually Rook B7. Believe it or not, this shows the tactical ferocity of the position. And look, covering escape squares of the king is like you've got to think what percentage of mating possibilities are you now creating mating nets. And the beautiful one here, I wonder if you can guess after Bishop takes F4 what white can play in this position. If I give you five seconds to pause the video here, white to play. Okay. Queen takes f6 becomes possible because of knight e4 uh, checkmating. Yeah, queen takes f6. Yeah, if e takes, then again, knight e4 checkmate. So it's very dangerous when the king's escape squares are, are taken up. Always like look look out for mates like a hawk when that happens. So this is really Stockfish's beautiful idea. This rook b7 it creates lots of possibilities for even sacking the queen once the rook's on that seventh rank. So we have rook g8 uh, being played, and now we have this yeah very dangerous scenario of the rook b7. So with things like queen takes f6 now on the cards uh, here. If white whimpered out with bishop c2, black plays bishop h6, trying to deflect away the pinned piece. Uh, so that's a disaster for white. Uh, and if rook b7 here, uh, you know, there's there's still tactics in the position like this to be wary of, though. Um, but black is not obliged to do that. So uh, okay. So rook, rook b7 anyway immediately is the strongest. We have queen a5. Again, to repeat some of the patterns here in this particular position, if taking, uh, well, actually in this position now, after bishop takes b7, there's check, and bishop takes e5, winning the queen and the knight. Yeah, th there was no other option there. The bishop and queen cooperate very well on the light and dark squares. Uh, on bishop d7, then queen takes g8, deflecting the knight away from e4. So if knight takes g8, there's knight e4 checkmate. Yeah, there's lots of funny things going on here. If queen c8 here, then white can castle. This is just chaos, this position. Look at this. If queen takes, then there's rook e1, believe it or not. So with the queen hanging, if knight takes, bishop takes e5 is, is checkmate. If knight f g4, then queen h8. This is really a wonderful <laughs> tactical position to, to check out uh, for the fun of tactics. So the queen on h8 hits e5 as well. Too much pressure and it crashes through uh, for white. So interesting variations. I thought queen a5 though was played. Uh, we have white's castling. Just casually castling, giving up c3. Uh, and now the rooks double, and now there's introduces rook 1 to b6. Checkmate. Black plays queen a5. So just to put that on the board vividly, g5, there's rook 1 b6. Checkmate. So something has to be done about that. Queen a5 guarding b6. But now uh, Stockfish basically calculates to the end. Bishop takes e5, a false checkmate. Uh, the king hunt doesn't last too long. Rook takes e7, check. Uh, now bishop takes e7 was played. If king d6, then queen takes f6, and then queen e6 takes e6 is mate. So uh, bishop takes e7, check. Bishop e6. It's trying to delay things. If king f4, it's swifter. The uh, checkmate here is pretty swift, like that, for example. So bishop e6, but we have the same kind of ideas. Queen e3 check here. And now rook b3 and it's checkmate on move 25. Yeah, very, very fine tactical victory from Stockfish. 
and casting a light on, historically and culturally on Fisher and Tao and how Fisher might have you know checked out Tao's games and even used it in Blitz games like a year a year later. So the provocative knight d7, yes, it does seem as though knight takes f7 from the evidence of this game uh, is worth a punt. It's not just it doesn't seem to be that unsound at all. It's justified by the uh, peculiarities of the position. If you enjoyed this game video, then please click on the top left box, which should appear shortly. Uh, to become a member at chessbowl.net, play against other YouTubers. You can also test yourself on the variations, fascinating variations in this game and other game videos from the improved menu, puzzle books option, uh, which also has a link to the annotated game. I'll probably do an addendum, a short addendum on that for one or two of those. Comments, questions, donations, see the description. Like, share, subscribe with the notification bell, really appreciated. Thanks very much. There's quite a lot of mates in this puzzle book, so I'm actually putting one to five uh, moves, just mates for white and black. Uh, so we still get quite a lot. So here, this position, if black stepped back, we had this chat mate. Okay. Uh, here, uh, there's knight takes c7 in this line for bishop c5 chat mate. You can have a lot of fun with this book. <laughs> so uh, here, uh, is it bishop e3? That looks like chat mate. Uh, here, I think d7 is uh, good. And now there's d8 or queen b6. There's a couple actually testing both aspects of that. So we'll probably get a variation here uh, where queen b6. All right, so here I think knight e4 because that rook was covering all the escape squares. Uh, this one, I think it was, was it? Queen takes g8, and then I did knight e4 checkmate to luring the knight away from e4. Uh, this one, I think it was queen takes f6 because of knight e4. We got the, all the escape squares covered. Tactics philosophy demonstrated. Uh, here, I think it's just uh, checkmate there. Okay, so here uh, it looks as though queen takes is mating in this line. And uh, here, I think it's just Queen G3. Yeah, some very easy ones. I made it very, very easy for myself. One to five. Yeah, have fun though, checking the filters out and all the variations there. Quite a lot of variations to check out there and revise uh, for this wonderful uh, tactical game. Okay, uh, so that's on the improved menu of chessmold.net. Puzzle books. Uh, so you should see an image soon. Got 47 in that one compared to just 22 on, the, on our previous day. Thanks very much.